big section of this um, this whole chapter is just can you do math? Can you actually do math and convert? Um, and what we use is we use either what you call the factor label, which I'm not sure if that's what Mrs. Matier called it or not, but the factor label method or good old dimensional analysis. And they both mean the exact same thing. It's basically using equalities to cancel things. So there are things you inherently know are true. You know that if I give you 10 dimes, that equals a dollar. And what we're doing is we use that in conversion. So some of you learned this, like you learned this in ninth grade. Well, everyone learned it, or everyone was taught it in ninth grade. Um, some of you learned it, and this is gonna be very easy for you. Some of you never fully learned something like this, and you kind of just get by. This is not the time for that. It will crash and burn on the test. Um, so you need to make sure you really understand what we're going over here. Um, so just as an example, some conversion factors we can have. Um, we all know that four quarters equals one dollar. So if we're going to use that as a conversion factor, we can write it two ways. We can either write that, hey, we have four quarters. And on my equality, that's going to equal one dollar. Or it depends on what I need and what they're giving me. I can say that, hey, one dollar is four quarters. And again, this is super simple. Um, we're just trying to show you, you know, this is what we're talking about. This you're fine with. You are fine with things that you know equal each other. What becomes very difficult for most people is the metric system because you don't inherently know how many nanometers are in a meter. It'd be great if you did, but this is where you have to start learning that. And you're going to apply this same technique to the metric. And then again, we know we have 60 seconds in a minute. So again, we can write 60 seconds in one minute or we can write that one minute is 60 seconds now so what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of these show you um, one where you're doing um, like two-dimensional or three-dimensional um, and then you're going to practice these and you need to make sure that you can do this again this is not a joke it's not a fake thing um, people bomb this test because they don't understand the math um, and that's just not okay. All right, so first problem. I love going to arcades. I think they're super fun. And um, I'm going to go to the arcade, and I somehow have $75 to spend at the arcade. And I want to know how many quarters that is. Now, again, can you do this in your head? Probably, yeah. But just to show you what we're talking about here, um, whenever they give you a math problem that you're converting, they're going to give you a number, and that's going to start your problem. So you always write what they give you first. So I have $75, and they want me to go to quarters. So the first thing you have to do is you have to stop and think, can I directly go from dollars to quarters? Is that feasible? And in our case, it is. So what that means is this is going to be a one-step problem because I can just go. I can just do it. Um, what you want to keep in mind is that you're trying to cancel what you do not want, and you're trying to get what you want. So what they're asking you, whatever the question is, that should go on top typically because that's what you are looking for, um, unless you're doing like a density problem, which we'll look at later. So since I want quarters, my quarters has to go on top because that's what I want to end up with. And since I have dollars here, it has to be canceled mathematically, which means dollars has to go on the bottom, which makes sense if you understand what you're doing. It gets much, much easier to do. And then what we say is, oh, we know that, hey, $1 is four quarters. You can actually, you know, check yourself, say, okay, dollars cancels. I'm going to get quarters. That means I'm going to get the right answer. Do your math. And what you would get is 300. Sorry, my handwriting is bad. Uh, quarters, which is a lot of games. Um, if you wanted to do specifically sig figs, which we aren't at typically, not yet. I'm not holding you accountable for yet. But if you did it, um, you'd actually have to put it in scientific notation. And you'd have 3.0 uh, times 10 to the second. Um, and really, actually, sig figs aren't necessary for this one because it's, there's not something, you can't have half a quarter or anything. Um, but if you wanted just for the mathematical reason to do it, you could. All right, next one down here, we have 3.6 times 10 to the 4 seconds, and we want to go to days. And three, this is 36,000 seconds. But what we have here, I'm just going to write what we have. We have 3.6 times 10 to the 4 seconds. And again, you have to stop and think, can I go right to days? And you could. I mean, you could figure out how many seconds are in a day. But that's not really your most easy 
path. So what I would do in this case is I would do it in a multiple step fashion. And you're going to do the exact same thing we've done, it's just you're going to have more of those equalities. So if you think of time, the next thing up from seconds is usually minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put seconds on the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to put minutes on top. And then you can fill in your equality because we know that one minute is 60 seconds. And you're, you're welcome to write out actual like M-I-N for minutes, <coughs> S-E-C for seconds. That's fine. I'm just writing it short. Once you're in minutes, you think, okay, what's the next thing that's bigger than minutes? And again, next thing bigger is hours. So I'm going to put hours on top because that's what we're going to. And that means my minutes is going to go on the bottom. And again, we know that one hour is 60 minutes. And you say, okay, what's bigger than hours? Well, next thing is days, which is what we want. So this will be our last step. And what we're going to put is we're just going to say that um, our days is going to go on top. And our hours is going to go on the bottom. So we know that one day is approximately, we know it says approximate, 24 hours. And you put it in your calculator. Uh, make sure you multiply across. So it's just all times one, divide the bottom, and if we put that in, ah, we get, um, let me just type it, I'll be faster, uh, 0 0.4166666 uh, days. If you want to do sig figs, again, your measurements, what determines your sig figs, so our final answer would be 0.42 days. So it's kind of sad. 36,000 seconds isn't even half a day, which is, I find personally, slightly depressing if the day is dragging. Last thing I just want to show you is one where you're in a two-dimensional situation or a three-dimensional situation. So this situation here is if we want to go from millimeters cubed to centimeters cubed. Um, and what you have to be careful about this is that um, you, you, you can't just use a normal conversion. So if you think about a ruler, um, you probably all know that one centimeter is 10 millimeters. If you think of a ruler, centimeters, millimeters. Um, so that's our general conversion factor we're using here. So if I, if I start off the way I normally do, and I write my thing, I have 25, bad writing, sorry, millimeters cubed. Um, and I make my first conversion factor. I want centimeters, so I would put that on top, one centimeter. And I'd have to put my 10 millimeters on the bottom. Um, the problem is, is that if we just leave it like this, I'm not doing the problem right. I didn't cancel everything. So I have millimeters cubed, and I'm canceling it with millimeters, but that would leave me with millimeters squared on top, which isn't what I want. So when you're doing a two-dimensional or a three-dimensional situation, you have to take your conversion factor and make it fit. So what that means is this measurement is three-dimensional. I need to make this one-dimensional factor three-dimensional. And the way you do that is you cube it. So what you do is you cube everything inside here. So I have one cubed is one. Centimeter cubed is centimeter cubed. If I can write, not very well today. Um, 10 cubed is 1,000. And millimeters cubed is millimeters cubed. So what that does is it gives you a conversion factor that's mathematically correct, it's mathematically sound, and it actually cancels what you need. So if you do your math, 25 times 1 divided by 1,000, uh, you should get 0 0.025 millimeters cubed as your answer. I'm sorry, centimeters cubed. You can yell at me when I'm wrong. So you're going to be practicing these. You're going to be practicing ones where you convert uh, different situations, and you just need to make sure um, that you really are um, going through this. So I will show you a couple in a, a little bit about like metrics and how you specifically do metrics and like speeds and densities. Um, but that's really where you're you're going with it.